We are back at NV Auto for an update on project 2JZ BRZ. We've got the latest hotness here from Garrett, plus we're going to show you a roll cage. This is the old Subaru drift car and it of course has a 2JZ under the hood. This whole setup is going in the BRZ and it's running a Garrett 4088? Yeah, 4088R. And it makes about 880 at the wheels. 880 at the wheels. It's mild. That's a nice number. It's comfortable. I'd like to experience that, please. You had your chance. I did. Well, we'll do Season's it Season's over. <laughs> Actually, maybe we'll do it once you install this bad boy. Yeah. Latest and greatest from Garrett right this here. This is the latest and greatest. You want to give us a little rundown on what this is all about? It's a new GTX 3584 RS. RS. Yes. Yeah, so this is a completely redesigned turbo from Garrett. Lots of new technology in it. Uh, has a lot of nice features like all V-bands, ins and outs, which is beautiful provisions for a speed sensor, and then they've totally redone this exhaust wheel here. Right. So it's apparently a new high efficiency wheel, moves gas more efficiently. Yeah, they're saying this little 35 here can make up to a thousand wheel horsepower, which is the target on our car. So yeah. the quick spool is what we're really after, and right. this should fill that void. Amazing. And this being stainless steel is kind of a cool feature too, you were saying? Yeah, it's just nothing's going to rust. You know, you see some older turbos that get really rusty exhaust housing. It's just Stainless will be a lot nicer and cleaner and all the V-band flanges are beautiful. It's all nicely ported too and this apparently is not transferable onto the uh, regular GT and GTX turbos. No, this is it's all proprietary the, to this. The shape new, of this wheel is yeah, different. Yeah, th this there's magic happening here. There is I can magic. get really technical but it's don't, don't want to go down that road? Yeah. Okay, so I guess what we're going to do is bolt this thing on eventually and put it on the dyno and see how much jam it makes compared to the 4088. Is that the direction we're going in? Yeah, for sure. We're going to get this turbo on this motor, but in that car. In that car, right. Yeah. And uh, see if we can go up from 880. I'm confident. And, and destroy more tires in the process? Yes. You were also talking about maybe stroking this motor, but before that, we actually installed some JE pistons and a Pro Seal head gasket in there. Right. So let's do the uh, Scooby-Doo transition to the JE stuff right now. <laughs> We're here for this 2J, 2J build time with JE Pistons. They sent us the good stuff. Let's make some jam, Dove. Oh, I'm pumped. Can't wait. These sexy slugs of high tensile forged aluminum are designed to withstand high boost levels and the new asymmetrical skirt technology reduces friction and mass while providing a stronger platform. This Pro Seal multi layer steel gasket is also ideal for high boost applications since its unique soft radius embossments improve gasket conformability, reduce stress points, and provides a more uniform clamp load distribution. So, maybe you can tell us what this is about because last year you made a billion horsepower with a stock block. Why a refresh? It is, was it just time or? Uh, not time. Actually, unfortunately, pulling this engine apart, we found that there was no really good reason to take it apart. The right. bearings and everything, cylinders, everything came out looking amazing, which is incredible. Yeah. Given the abuse that Riley and yourself and Dave yeah. and myself yeah. put on the car that yeah. night. Uh, but we want to make some more extra power. Right. And we want to be a little bit more responsive. So we hooked up with JE to get these pistons yeah and they're actually a higher compression ratio right so we're bumping up the compression by one point these are nine and a half to one instead of the eight and a half to one should make it a little bit snappier which right. is good we're running e85 so we don't have to really worry about detonation or anything like that yeah you got three uh three in the hole so mm -hmm. what do you need to do to these last three to get them um in i've already done it but i'll just do a quick rundown uh we gapped all the rings uh specifically for the bores on this engine yeah uh, which is super important because if you just take these out of the box and put them in the engine, chances are when they get hot, they're going to butt up against each other mm -hmm. and not have any gap whatsoever. Right. Which uh, is fully dangerous. Why is that? So, oh, well, you can cause detonation. The rings can actually melt into each other and melt into the, into the ring lands. Okay. So you really want to avoid that. And... Also, it can cause too much compression. So let's just say one cylinder, you have like uh, like 0 0.018 clearance, yeah. and the next one's 0 0.06. You're actually changing 
the mm. pressure in between cylinders. Gotcha. And when your tuner's tuning your car, you won't be very happy about it. Right. Or the car may run, seem everything will be good, and then all of a sudden you're like have a failure in that cylinder where everything was tight. Yeah. Because things weld together or they don't relieve enough pressure. Oh, the old hand spinner, huh? Yeah, th there are electric ones which are like very good for uh, mass production, but we probably build one or two engines a month here. Right. So no the, hand, the hand crank works just fine, and I find you have a little bit more control. Anyway, so I just did a quick little grind there. These still butt up nice and even, yep. but I'll show you what happens when some people don't know what the hell they're doing, and they go like this, and they grind their things, and they're like, all right, now I have the perfect gap, but if you butt them up against each other, you see that is not perfect at all. You can still... Oh, yeah, you can see this little gap there. You the see bottom. the gap at the bottom? Yep. So... Important thing when you're filing the rings, make sure that you get it in the grinder flush yep. and, you know, make it straight. Like, I can fix this up. Get it nice and yep. squared up. So now you have a proper surface that right. seals. Alright, All right, so uh, this is a quick infomercial in how not to install the rings. Yeah, it happens a lot, actually. So... Uh, there's tools to install piston rings, or you can do it by hand. I mean, whatever whatever works for you is fine. Okay. Uh, I'm using the Subaru piston because we have abundance of them. <laughs> yeah. Because we take them out and all the fresh short blocks we build. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, they go to put a ring in, they're like, okay, this is a secondary ring. I'm just going to jam it in here. And then they twist it like this mm -hmm. and then install it into the, into the groove. Okay. The problem when you do that is... You fully distort the ring. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to do this to the ring. Okay. Because after you see that little bend I did there, yeah. see how that's yeah, taking really, that shape now. Yeah, it has. So that's going to bind on the bottom land. This is going to bind on the top. So you never want to do that. Okay. When you install these, if you don't have the fancy dancy tool, yeah, you just use your fingers to pry it evenly. Okay. Uh, I see. Into the ring. Yeah. Groove. So no twisting. No twisting. Yeah. And now it fits absolutely perfect. So we're going to put the uh, rod bearings into the connecting rod and into the connecting rod cap. We've already checked the clearances on all these. Before you drop the bearing in, you just want to make sure all the surfaces are clean. You don't have any debris in here. We've already checked the rods for galling or anything like that. Everything's perfect. So. Just slide the bearings in. Don't drop your nut stuff. Oh, that's a bolt. I haven't dropped my nuts oh, yet. Sorry, sorry. So you've got this fancy clamp thingy around it to it, keep the rings in? It's actually not fancy. It's not fancy. No. Not fancy at all. This I we don't typically do too many three liter things. Yeah. So I don't have the actual fancy spring compressor like I do for the Subaru stuff. Yeah. But this will do the job. Okay. Uh so it's basically in. The bore, the skirts are inside the bore. Yeah. And you just take it and you just go, Pop and that's in. it. Huh. Yeah. Just like that. Just, just like that. And then we'll push it down, flip it over. So you use oil uh, rather than an assembly lube? Or? Yes. Okay. So typically, uh, if we're going to build an engine that's going to sit for a little while before mm -hmm. starting, I'd use assembly lube. Yeah. But we actually have a pressurizing system that we use before we run this engine. Okay. So this engine will see warm uh oil yes. at 65 psi okay uh for at least like a couple minutes before it ever starts okay so using kind of gunky assembly lube isn't necessarily required okay i mean there's differing differing opinions on that yes but uh has worked for worked for us really well just a little bit of oil like literally this is just so we can spin it over right. while it is uh, sitting around the shop. And is this a stepped procedure or do you just go straight to the... the no, you torque? just go straight to the full torque, although I kind of step it slightly. Like I'll just go... To, uh, I think we want between 45 and 50 foot pounds. Okay. Uh, but I'll go to like 20 some odd on each side. Right. Make sure everything's seated nicely. We don't have any oddball crooked things happening yeah which we don't okay and then i'll just crank it right to 46.3 47.2 there you go okay well doug you made that look easy you got two more to go here two more to go 
I don't know if we really need to show people two more. It's the same process, right? It is the same process over and over and over again. <sighs> oh, hey, Peter. I should have mentioned that the exhaust housings come in three different sizes. The smallest is this 0.83. There's a 1.01 in the middle. And we're gonna run the big boy 1.21, plus Dove's holding this 1,000 horsepower core. Yeah, this is Garrett's 1,000 horsepower intercooler core that we're gonna put to the duty of cooling all the hot air from that turbo. It will make lots of that, so all that turbo goodness, good, goodness covered, we're gonna take a look at the roll cage now, get an update on all of Vin's hard work. Yes. Oh, two dudes in an engine bay. It's something you see every day, right? So Dove, this is the perfect vantage point to tell us about your fancy new roll cage. Yeah. What do you got going on here? Um, it's a 100% FD spec cage. It's yeah. not overly fancy. It's pretty much exactly to the rule set. Uh, Anything specific to the rules that's different with this cage than say a road race cage? Uh, yeah, the one main thing would be the intrusion bars here that right. protect the driver and passenger's feet in case you're at full lock and you impact something. Yeah. It's a typical problem in drift cars where the whole wheel well will push in with yeah. the tire and break ankles, feet and stuff like that. So that's one major safety upgrade that Formula Drift built into their rule set. Okay. The rest of it's pretty much like road racing setup. Yeah. Pretty basic. Door bars, obviously, in case you get t bones. Yeah, we went with the bigger NASCAR bars this time. Riley says he's going to get really rowdy in this car. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. And obviously, it's got the usual main hoop with the diagonal, the harness bar, and then the two bars that go back to the rear suspension area. Yep. Nothing radical about it. Is weight savings a concern with a cage like this? Like, did you try to keep it simple to reduce yeah, the weight? Or? Yeah, we don't want the car to be too heavy, and it just, we really have to focus on keeping Riley safe. So, yeah. you know. It, nothing's overkill. We're, we're not planning on rolling it off a cliff. If you look at some of our rally cars, they have like a way more comprehensive cage. Yeah, right? yeah. But uh, and obviously it needs a coat of paint. Yeah, and we still got to do like all the nice dimple dye things. So you're gonna gussets. tie it into yeah, the Yeah, it's all gonna be pillars, all tied into the A pillars, the B pillars, B pillars, well. pillars and everything. And then um, painting it orange. What color are we painting this bad boy? Uh, the cage. Yeah. Not orange. Not orange. No, the car it looks really bad inside. <laughs> That's true. I never thought of that. Yeah. Uh, probably the interior color. We've been going with World Rally Blue on all our interiors okay. to keep the Subaru theme yeah. in, inside the car. Yeah. Um, exterior, I don't know. You haven't decided yet? No, I'm hoping to find a sponsor that has a color scheme they want. Ah, okay. That, that makes sense. Yeah. So, interneters out there, when you want to sponsor a pro drift team, come find Dove at Envy. For sure. He's, he's ready to take your money. Yeah, we're ready to put somebody's livery on a car. <laughs> so, with the cage pretty much done, what's next in the process? Uh, well, we got to pull the engine out of the Subaru yeah. and get it fitted into this Subaru. Yeah. Uh, that will be probably a rather large undertaking, making mounts for the engine, transmission, getting the, you know, all the math sorted out for yeah. that. And then uh, we'll have Nam start building the wiring harness. Okay. Do you have to do anything to the center tunnel to fit the tranny in there? I don't know yet. Because the tunnel is obviously probably a different shape than the... It the, is. Yeah. We didn't have to cut too much out of the STI and I'm hoping we don't have to cut too much out of this. But if we do, no big deal. Yeah. Cut it out, make it work. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. So I guess that's a wrap on this 2JZ BRZ update. We will be back soon once the engine's in here. We'll take a look underneath. See how much tunnel damage really happens. Yeah, that should be some exciting. We'll harshly critique your drive shaft angles. We'll chirp you as much as we can. As long as the internet tells me how to do it. Yeah, well, there's there's a lot of experts out there that'll give you sound advice. Yep. Until next time, over and out. But wait, there's more. Since Vin the Fabricator at Enviato shot a ton of cool footage of the cage work, here's a little sample of the welding acrobatics required by a job like this. i